Alright, assalamu alaikum and good day student. So for today, we're going to be looking at chapter 10. Uh, this has been covered in the previous class. Uh, we had a physical class uh, last week. Alright, so this is just a review of what we have learned. Alright, so actually we have covered all of the syllabus for physics too. Alright, so for chapter 10 here, in the reference book, it is called as 33, chapter 33. Alright, so we start firstly with learning about, in this case, AC sources. Okay, so previously, for example, if you have a battery, let's say a triple A battery, and then the voltage is 1.5 volt. So the voltage is 1.5 volt. If we plot a graph, of voltage against the time so what happened is we're going to get a flat horizontal line which is actually representing a constant voltage of 1.5 volt it doesn't change however if we're talking about here AC sources the voltage is going to be um, alternating current meaning that it is always going to be changing direction so if we plot a graph of voltage against time, we're going to get this sinusoidal waveform. All right, again, uh, this is voltage against time graph, okay? And then to do that, it is just as uh, simply by multiplying with the sine function. Remember, here we have the voltage represented by a constant, which is a value 1.5 volt or any value of the voltage. Right, so if we want to change it into sinusoidal waveform, you can just multiply the value. For example, 1.5 is the V max or the amplitude of the voltage, multiply with sine theta. But we know that from a uh, previous um, subject, physics 1, PHYF115, um, omega is related to the radial uh, frequency. Right, or the angular frequency is going to be theta over t. So if you rearrange that, you're going to get uh, theta is equal to omega t. So in the end, the equation will be sine omega t, and then later on, we can further expand omega, which is equivalent to 2 pi f. Okay, and then this is going to be the full expression for the sinusoidal um, waveform. Okay, so here delta V max is actually the amplitude, okay, and then it is going to be as a function of time. So we have the voltage as a function of time. So that's the idea. Okay, so we have the voltage as a function of time, and then uh, in Malaysia, the voltage rating is 230 volt, okay, and then the frequency is 50 hertz. However, in the United States, as you can see in the reference book here, the frequency is at 60 hertz so that is why when you're traveling abroad you really need to have um, the correct um, travel adapter right the voltage adapter okay to make sure that your um, electrical appliances that you're using in Malaysia can also be used in other country right because of the voltage rating the amplitude as well as the frequency Okay, so this is um, an, I would say, a graphical representation of the two DC and AC source. For DC, uh, it means that the voltage in this case is going to be constant and it will also have constant current. However, because of this changing direction of the voltage, the current is also going to change. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, it moves initially, you can imagine clockwise, and then it is counterclockwise, okay? So that is the motion of the electric charges inside of uh, this AC circuit. Alright, so we're going to take a look now um, in the second subtopic, which is going to be about resistors in AC circuit. Okay, so for this one, alright, so for this one, we have the AC source now, alright? This is going to be the symbol, 
All right. So for a battery, we have two parallel lines, one shorter, one, la one longer. So that is for battery. The longer one is for the positive terminal. And then this is for AC source. Okay, so for AC source, we have this uh, sine waveform inside of a circle. So that means it is an AC source and then it is connected to the resistor. So the idea here is actually, um, as always, we can apply the Kirchhoff loop rule here, which is the voltage rule. It means uh, that the voltage supply is going to be equal to the voltage loss. The voltage supplied here is going to be the voltage as a function of time, which is this one, delta V, the voltage is equal to delta V max sine omega T, right? And then it is going to be equal to the current, okay, through the resistor, okay, and then times with the resistance, okay? So this is going to be the equation initially Voltage supply is equal to the voltage loss. Okay, so if you rearrange the formula, if you rearrange the formula, now uh, this is going to be uh, the main parameter, I, okay, current. We use small letter to show that the current always change with time. And then R, we bring it to the other side. It will be the voltage now divided by the resistor. All right, so that it's not that difficult. And then we know that the voltage will have this full expression okay so the voltage will have this full expression of so i'm going to highlight it here so this is going to be the voltage delta v is equal to delta v max sine omega t and then again this is going to be the voltage and then this is going to be the full equation all right so this is going to be the full equation and then we can divide the voltage over the resistance sine omega t doesn't change so delta v max over r we're going to get i max so in the end uh, the current through the resistor as a function of time is going to be i max sine omega t so from this expression we can actually um, determine that i max or the maximum current is delta v max over r which is this one Okay, so that's the idea all right so in this case this is the voltage the voltage through the resistor so the voltage through the resistor is as you can see current as a function of time and then multiply with r so the current multiply with r as you can see you're going to you still get delta v max so four resistors that are connected to ac source here creating an ac circuit um, the voltage supply is equal to the voltage loss okay there's no change in it and then we can actually draw the most important part is the phasor diagram so if we draw the voltage and the current eh, as a function of time obviously remember it is in a sine function all right sine omega t all right so sine omega t it is also going to create this sinusoidal waveform so the idea here is actually we can either use um, this sinusoidal waveform or you can actually use this what we call as phasor diagram. So for a phasor diagram, so as you can see here, uh, we have, uh, for example, two arrows, okay, that is actually in the same direction and then you are going to uh, rotate it, okay, rotate it in this case counterclockwise all right so as you can see initially it is along the x-axis so there's no value okay of voltage and the current so as you rotate it what happened is it is going to be moving to point a at point a it is imagined as if now it is in this direction so it is at a is here all right so i repeat this is at the origin origin a B, and then moving on uh, further to C, all right, further to C, and then capital T is one complete cycle. So as you can see, it, it uh, actually returned back to original position, all right, meaning that it is zero. So uh, uh, as you can see here, we can uh, represent the current and the voltage as a function of time. 
in three forms. Eh? The first one is the formula sine omega t. You can also represent it graphically uh, using this sine waveform or the last one you can also represent it in the phasor diagram. Okay, so if we talk about voltage and uh, in this case uh, current through AC circuit, what happened is uh, the current and the voltage is always going to be um, moving, um, in this case, in the positive and in the neg negative direction, meaning, for example, clockwise and counterclockwise. All right? But at both directions, it will always reach its amplitude, positive amplitude and negative amplitude. So if we were to, in this case, calculate the average, the average voltage supplied for example the average uh, voltage delivered what happened is if we use the term voltage it is going to be equal to zero because the positive will cancel out the negative value okay so in this case if we have uh, AC circuit we're not going to be using um, the term average we're going to be using the RMS or the root mean square value Alright, so this is the root mean square value for the current. Um, we can um, unofficially call it as average uh, current or average voltage through the circuit. Okay, but that is mathematically incorrect because average means that it is going to cancel out from positive with the negative sides of the sine waveform. Alright, so we can also call this the root mean square current as the effective current as well as the effective voltage delivered to the uh, circuit. So in this case, we have this equation. The root mean square current is equal to I max, the maximum value divided by cert 2. Okay, And then 1 over cert 2 is also equal, equal to 0 0.701 multiplied with I max. Or we can just use 0 0.701. 07 IMAX okay and then uh, same applies for RMS voltage so if for example we want to calculate what is the average power delivered previously you know that the power is I square R all right but again if we want to use this uh, if you want to calculate average power delivered we cannot use average current uh, because average current is zero we have to use IRMS, which is the effective value of current. So, for example, as mentioned here, if uh, the maximum current is 2 ampere, okay, it is going to be um, equal to R IRMS 1.4, 1 ampere. So, this is uh, what I uh, meant just now. Okay, so, for example, if we have um, current sinusoidal waveform, remember, we have that equation for current right so the current as a function of time is going to be I max okay and then sine omega t right so that is going to be the equation and then as you can see we have positive and negative sides of the um, waveform so the positive side is the upper side here this is positive and the lower side it will be negative so if you calculate the value average value you have to add the positive and the negative and then eventually it is going to be equal to zero so what happened is mathematically we can square the current so that all of the sinusoidal waveform relies on the x-axis here all right or on the horizontal axis here so all will be positive and then we divide it by two to get the original value we square square root the entire expression so that is why we get I R M S current all right so we have done this uh, tutorial question in the class um, last week okay um, so this is what happened when we connect a resistor with this AC source all right so the AC source here the voltage as a function of time is Delta V max sine Omega T so from the um, question we we know that the resistance is 70 ohm resistance is 70 ohm the voltage 
all right we'll have this expression okay and then let's take a look at the first question 4a if the voltage through the resistor is in this case equal to 0 0.25 which is equivalent to 25 percent eh? 0 0.25 here also equal to 25 percent which is also equal to 25 over 100 okay and then it reaches that value for the first time when the time is 0 0.01 second so the question asks what is the angular frequency of the source okay and then the second part of the question asks what is the next value of t for which delta vr is equal to delta 0 0.25 delta v max so there are two parts of this question but understand the first part the question mentioned that it reaches 25% of the maximum voltage when the time is 0 0.01 second. And then the second part, 4B, the question asks, what is the next value of the time for which uh, the voltage goes back to 25% of Vmax? Okay, so I hope you remember that question. Alright, so to solve that, we're going to, um, in this case, um try to draw the diagram okay so we're going to to try to draw the diagram okay so this is going to be the voltage as a function of time and then as you can see here let's imagine um this is the point where um the value is 25 percent of v max the peak or the maximum value or the amplitude is delta v max but when it reaches 25 percent or 0 0.25 the time will be 0 0.01 second. So what we have to do is we, we can write the expression all right, of the voltage delta V as a function of time when the time uh, in this case is 0 0.01 second is equal to delta V max sine, remember, omega P, right? Omega and then multiply with the time. So the time here is going to be 0 0.01 second. Okay. And then uh, afterward, we can um, write the expression. Okay. And then as you can see here, for the voltage now, when the time is 0 0.01 second, it is 0 0.25 delta V max. I, I put it here at, as the 0 0.25 delta V max because that is the voltage right when uh, it is at um, 0 0.01 second okay and then um, delta v max okay and then sine 0 0.01 omega okay so and then afterward we can eliminate delta v max okay and then we we can get the function to be 0 0.25 and then sine 0 0.01 omega all right, so we have to use our calculator to solve it. Okay, uh, please wait for the expression to appear. Okay, on the screen. Okay, and then okay. So, uh, make sure in your calculator. Okay, change your angle input okay to um, radian okay to radian All right make sure that your calculator is changed to the setting to radian Alright, so as you can see here, um, this is going to be the voltage at the time, 0 0.01 second here, okay, 
delta V max sine omega t, the time is 0 0.01 second, we can eliminate delta V max out of the expression because it appears in both sides all right, of the equation. Okay, and then afterward, we, we have 0 0.25 equal to sine 0 0.01 omega. Okay, and then we move sine to the other side, it will be arc sine, all right? Or sometimes you call it as shift sine here, or sine negative 1, 0 0.25 here. Use your calculator, remember to make sure that it is in radian, so you're going to get this value. Okay, and then afterward, you can... Um, divide 0 0.01 here into the expression here and then you're going to get omega uh, which is 25.27 radian per second so this is going to be the correct final answer okay so moving on now um, when we want to know the later time as it actually uh, approaches 25 percent again uh, what happened is we don't know the time here but we can illustrate uh, we can obviously circle the point it when it reaches back it returns back to 25 percent so the idea here is actually the voltage obviously start from zero increases to 25 percent at this point the time is 0 0.01 second we don't know when it approaches amplitude value or delta v max and then later time as you can see here it returns back to 25 percent to eventually reaches zero and approaches the negative amplitude so that's the idea but the question asks what is the time here so the time here is going to be um, as you can see um, the horizontal line okay and then for one cycle to complete one cycle it will be 2 pi 2 pi and then half of a cycle here will be equal to pi so remember that the angle in radian sine theta here right in this case we can get the gap the gap here the length will be the same the same width from 0 to 0 0.01 okay so in this case pi minus omega t to get the gap here all right okay and then um, obviously again the voltage is 0 0.25 delta v max we can eliminate that Okay, and then you can solve this in order to get the time. So you can get the time by solving this expression. So please try to do so in order to get the um, correct final answer. Okay, so now um, we proceed to the third one, the third um, subtopic, which is about inductors in AC circuit. So if we connect AC source here to an inductor, Obviously, uh, the current supply will convert, um, will be converted to magnetic field. So the inductor will be magnetized. It will be surrounded by the magnetic field. Uh, and then as always, um, in this case, the voltage supplied must be equal to the voltage loss. Okay, the voltage supplied is equal to the voltage loss. Okay, and then uh, specifically, for this uh, inductor, the voltage supply is delta V is equal to delta V max and omega T, which is this one. The voltage loss is going to be EL, which is the self-induced EMF, remember, which is something that we've learned in the previous uh, class. Right? So we know that um, EL is equal to negative L di over dt. Alright, so if you go through the derivation, you'll find out that, um, as you can see here, uh, we have the equation, the voltage is equal to the self-induced EMF, okay, and then we, we can substitute delta V here with its entire expression, delta V max and omega T, and then, sorry, if you rearrange the formula, okay, you're going to get the current as a function of time. Okay, so for this uh, one, uh, this is actually the graph of current uh, through the inductor. And then if you take a look at the derivation just now, uh, you'll see that uh, the, the current in this case will have a different sets of uh, phase. Alright, 
which is going to be uh, in this case omega t and then uh, minus okay um, pi over 2 okay which is half of the um, half of the quarter of the cycle so what happened is this is the voltage all right so this is the voltage and then the current as you can see lacks the voltage by one fourth of a cycle a full cycle is two pi and then one fourth will be pi over two all right so this uh, happens because the voltage is supplied okay and then it takes a bit of time for the current okay inside of the inductor to reach its maximum value because of um, according to the Lenz's law okay it will uh, produce voltage on its own that is going to be opposed to the change that produce them okay so this is going back to what we learned in chapter 9 okay and then because of that the current lags a bit okay uh, by uh, pi over 2 so in this case uh, we can use phasor diagram right we can use phasor diagram and it's going to be 90 degrees with one another so let's imagine this is the voltage initially zero and then if we rotate car voltage it reaches maximum first and then later on followed by the current okay and then the rotation uh, proceeds and then that is how we can actually represent the voltage and the current through the inductor using phasor diagram okay so what's important is that um, as you can see here the maximum current will be equal to um, delta v max over omega l so for your reference um, i will write down the equation uh, that has been uh, derived okay into this slide okay but the most important part is you know that uh, del uh, in order to get i max it is delta v max divided by this something so what some this something is what we call as the inductive reactants okay and then it is going to have the symbols it it can be simplified with the symbol of omega l so um, the derivation um, for the inductor here so I'm going to write it here okay um, so this is going to be the equation if you remember if you can see right so the current through the inductor is equal to delta v max omega l and then sine omega t minus pi over 2 okay all right so um we did the derivation in the class eh? um, remember that uh, we have inductor and then the inductor is connected to the ac source so this is the idea l and uh, this is the ac source Okay, and then um, what happened is the voltage supply is going to be equal to the voltage sort of loss or being used up by the inductor. Okay, so for this one, it is going to be L di over dt and then this one will be delta V max sine omega t. Okay, and then... Uh, if you rearrange the formula, you're going to get um, waiting delta v max sine um, omega t over l dt and then di. Okay, Okay, so eventually, as you can see, delta V max, okay, um, here, okay, 
uh, sine omega t is equal to L di over dt. So this is actually from um, the circuit just now. We have inductor and we have the AC source. So the voltage supplied by the AC source is delta Vt and then the voltage through the inductor will be El. Okay, so we just use the value. So the voltage supplied is this one is equal to the voltage through the inductor. So if we move L to the other side, it will be division. And then we move dt, it will be multiplication. So it is going to just equal to di. di is equal to delta V max sine omega t, dt, and di. So if we integrate the full value, we're going to get, eventually we're going to get, uh, in this case, the current through the inductor. Okay, and then if we integrate sign, you're going to get, supposedly you're going to get negative cos, eh? you're going to get negative cos. Okay, so you're going to get a negative cos. So remember, if you want to convert uh, from cos to sign, uh, you can use trigonometric identity. Okay, so you can refer to the notes in order to get the, um, in this case, in order to get the uh, full derivation. Okay, but the most important part is actually um, from the diagram, okay, uh, you see that the voltage supplied must be also equal to the voltage loss. Okay, and then this is going to be the equation. And then at the front here, this is going to represent the maximum current. This is the maximum current, delta V max over omega L, and the omega L can be represented by XL, which is what we call as the in inductive reactant. The unit will be ohm. All right. So in this case, this is going to be the equation. So IL, the current through the inductor, is equal to I max sine omega t minus pi over two. So the current lacks the voltage. Okay, so that's the idea. Alright, so now we take a look at the capacitors in AC circuit. Alright, so again we repeat the same kind of uh, derivation. We start firstly with the voltage supply is equal to the voltage loss or the voltage uh, consumed or stored in the capacitor. Delta Vt is equal to um, delta Vc. Right, so we know that uh, from the definition of capacitance, uh, delta Vc is also equal to Q over C. Right, that is the definition of capacitance. Okay, so uh, in this case, if you rearrange a formula, you, you can get the, um, in this case, you can get the charge. Okay, and then delta V multiply with delta C. And then delta V can be converted to delta V max sine omega t. Okay, and then if you, uh, in this case, differentiate the charge, okay, with respect to time, you're going to get the current because this is the definition of current uh, that we have learned in chapter 5 or topic 5. So in the end, we're going to get this equation and then it is going to give you cos omega t. So again, we can convert this into sine by using trigonometric identity. So because we want all of the expression to be in sine theta, okay, sine theta, okay, and then this is going to be the equation. So this is actually already good enough, um, but the most important part is knowing that how does a function actually uh, have a form? This is the current as a function of time, and then it is equal to I max here, the, the amplitude of current. The idea is that this is current as a function equal to amplitude of current sine theta. So that's the idea. Right, so with that, uh, we can uh, put um, omega C here at the lower part here and then it is 1 over omega c because this is mathematically equal to one another. So in this case, um, this part is going to be equivalent to what we call as capacitive reactants. Um, sort of like 
resistance okay but uh, in this case um, it is due to the capacitor all right so xc is going to be 1 over omega c all right so in the end we can also simplify it in this form i max is equal to delta v max over xc all right so in the end the voltage through the capacitor will be delta v max sine omega t and then it is actually i max times with xc which is the capacitive reactance okay so that is actually ideal okay so even though um we've gone through several circuits just now what happened when we connect ac source with resistor uh nothing much happened it everything will be in phase the current and the resistance will rise and falls at the same time but however if we connect ac source to inductor as well as capacitor uh, different behavior is going to be observed on the current all right so what happened if we connect to inductor the current lags all right but if we connect ac source to capacitor now what happened is the voltage will lag or in this case the current will leak right so this is going to be what happened if we connect all of the circuit elements together rlc series circuit uh, in certain reference book it is also called as rcl lrc but regardless when they are connected through uh, this series form they are still going to be uh, going to have the same characteristic because they are connected in series right so regardless if l is placed first then followed by c and then the last one is r all right so the the in this case uh the position changes it's still going to be uh the same characteristic with rlc circuit i say this because in certain reference book it is also called as l c r um and so on okay just as long as everything is there uh they are still going to be relevant to your syllabus okay it, it is going to have the same characteristic all right so in this case um as mentioned earlier when we have resistor uh, it doesn't change the current the current will have the same behavior as the voltage because it is AC circuit. Remember, it starts from zero, reaches maximum, fall, fall back to zero, and then reaches to the negative amplitude. All right, sinusoidal waveform. So what happens is the current also follows. But if we have inductor, uh, the voltage leads. The voltage reaches maximum first, then the current through the um, circuit will reaches maximum. And then when we have capacitor, uh, current lead current reaches maximum first then followed by the voltage so if we combine this all together resistor plus inductor plus capacitor we can draw the phasor diagram here into a single phasor diagram just like what we learned uh, when we have uh, talked about vectors and forces uh, this is also uh, vectors because they have direction so as you can see, inductor is positive y and capacitor is negative y. So they are against one another. But for resistor, it is on the horizontal x-axis. So it, it is going to be a single uh, value or a single parameters. So what happened is VL minus with VC will result in... Um, this length or this new vector okay because they are of the same axis right so this is VR again VR so in the end we can get what is going to be the voltage through RLC circuit by knowing the um, in this case the hypotenuse of the triangle so this is going to be the voltage through the RLC circuit it is due to voltage through resistor, inductor, as well as capacitor. Okay, so we use, in this case, uh, Pythagoras theorem in order to calculate uh, what is the voltage through the RLC circuit. Okay, so um, in this case, uh, we have the 
hypotenuse. This is hypotenuse, delta V max. This is X. So in this case, it is hypotenuse is equal to square root X square plus with Y square. All right. Again, R hypotenuse r is equal to square root x square plus with y square okay and then we can write down this in the form of i times with the react uh, in this case reactants as well as resistance okay, this is going to be the form so we can factorize current we can take it out and then we can have this form so we have delta v i and this combination of reactance and resistance now we can change it in this form so as you can see we have the voltage the current over this normally we use it as resistance but now it is going to be called as impedance a combination of resistance and capacitive and reactive uh, sorry inductive reactance xl xc okay so all of this is equal to impedance okay so impedance as you can see here has the unit of ohms it is going to be just like um, the term resistance but but resistance is only for resistor okay but when we have combination of uh, capacitor and inductor we call it as impedance okay because resistance is only for resistor Okay, so impedance is when we have RLC inside of the circuit. So in this case, we can now reduce or simplify this circle into just one parameter, which is Z. Okay, so that's actually the idea. Alright, so from the triangle again, we can get what is going to be the angle or the face, the face here, alright, the face angle, okay, or phi. The symbol of phi here uh, this is going to be the angle between the voltage and the current so again we can use um, trigonometry in order to get the uh, value of the phase sorry the phase angle this remember it is actually tangent theta is equal to y over x tangent theta is equal to y over x so r tangent y this is y over x okay again we can take uh, write down i here the current and again the current can be eliminated all right we can divide the current okay and then in the end to calculate the phase angle uh, this is going to be the equation uh, no worries you don't really have to memorize the derivation the formulas will be provided it's just that you have to know how does uh, this equation comes from how how just loosely know how uh, it is being derived so that you can actually know um, how to actually use the formula so what we get here the angle or the phase angle here specifically is that we know how much voltage leads the current okay how much voltage leads the current so meaning that if we rotate this according to this um, phase, um, in this case omega angular frequency so we know that how far behind the current is by knowing the value of uh, phase angle here okay so that's actually the idea so last but not least is uh, when we talk about the power delivered in AC circuit um, this is something that we have um, touched on uh, when we talk about uh, IRMS or root mean square current. So if we want to calculate the average power, we cannot use average current because average current is zero. We use IRMS or the root mean square value, which is the effective current. So the effective current square times with R. And then if you want to use another equation, uh, remember it is also equal to just IV if it is direct current uh, circuit DC circuit uh, average power is going to be VI or IV voltage times with current but for AC circuit you must multiply with cos phi cos with phaser 
diagram. Okay, so that's actually being argued. All right, so with that, um, please try to do on your own uh, tutorial question number 23. Okay, um, the question asks here, you are being given RLC circuit, resistor is 50 ohm, capacitor is 21 microfarad, okay, and then the inductor is here, 450. 460 millihenry and connected to Vmax, Delta Vmax 120 and um, the frequency is 60 Hertz. Question asks what is the phase angle? So you have to use um, tangent uh, phi is equal to uh, remember XL minus XC over R. Just from the previous slide, okay, and then from the angle if you get a positive angle, it means that the voltage reaches the value first. If you get a negative phase angle, it means that the current reaches the value. So remember from the diagram just now, uh, the voltage is slanted, which is the, the, the hypotenuse. The voltage is here. This is the current, horizontal. And then the angle is going to be the phase angle. So if you rotate, the voltage reaches maximum first, then followed by the um, current. So that is when the angle or the phase angle is positive. But if the phase angle is negative, the current is actually at the lower part. Okay. Sorry, the current the voltage is at the lower part, the current remains at the horizontal axis, at the x-axis. So the voltage is going to be at the lower part. So the current reaches first if the angle is negative. Okay. So uh, please try to solve this tutorial question number 23. You can pause it and try to find uh, the final answer in the Brighton. I've obviously uploaded the final answer. Okay. And then later on, uh, once you have done uh, trying, the tutorial question, please try to do these two um, past semester final exam question. All right, so this is taken from 22, 23. Right, the, the answer is written in red um, ink. All right, and moving on, you can also do the next question. Obviously, you can pause this. The next one is here, um, taken from 21, 22. Right, so again, RLC circuit. So regardless, if it is RCL, just use the same formula. It is still going to be the same. So this one, as you can see, as mentioned earlier, if you get the phase angle negative, current remains here, but the voltage is lower than the horizontal axis. So the current, the one in the blue color here, reaches maximum first, then followed by the voltage. Alright? So that's the idea. So if angle is negative, remember, normally we have VL, VC at the positive side. Okay? From, from the textbook. But if it is VL minus VC, okay, and then the angle is negative, it is at the negative side of the y-axis. Okay, so I hope you'll try to do this uh, two tutorial question. Okay, sorry, one tutorial question and two final exam question. And then um, in the next class, we're going to do the full revision for physics too.